Hi, this is Pastor Sue Cousineau. It is Monday, April 19th, and it is seven o'clock. I've been doing a series called Rise Above, and this is week number nine. So I hope you will join me tonight, even if this might be your first one. I think it's still going to be a benefit to you. So when I started um, this, this teaching series, I just felt like there was so much discouragement, and there still is in the world today. I know I've experienced it in my life. And it's like, you know, there should be ways for us as Christians to be able to um, not just endure or hold on by our fingernails, but to really um, understand what God is doing and join it and, and be a part of it and not just be under the circumstances. You know what I mean? So here's the interesting thing. So my first teachings, um, number one was a new point of view. Number two was direction. Number three, unity. And then I was using the acronym worship. So the W was for warfare. F um, then number five, or the O was obey. R, refreshing. S, surrender. I, intimacy. And tonight, P, for power. But did you notice something? I forgot the H. So instead of worship, we're, uh, I've been teaching on worship. So I think I better include the H, don't you? So next week... I will double back and teach on the H part of worship, which actually is help, which I think we need a lot of times. These teachings are all on my Facebook page and uh, most of them are on my uh, YouTube page, which is my YouTube channel, which is The Wise Warrior Susan Cousineau and the rest of them will all be on there as well. So tonight it is P, for power. And did you know that there is power released to us from the Holy Spirit when we worship God? So I'm going to teach a little bit more about that. So would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word and to share the thoughts and experiences that I've had, Lord, and what you've put on my heart. I pray, Lord, that your presence would come and really just go through the words that I have with your anointing, Lord. Um, nothing that I have in myself has any help or benefit for anyone unless your presence and your anointing come. So I ask, Lord, for that. And that this would not be just a, a waste of people's time, Lord, but you would really begin to encourage them in their minds and also in their will and their emotions, but especially, Lord, Fill them, Lord, in their spirit, man. I just thank you that you're with us and Satan is bound in Jesus' name. Amen. So God inhabits the praises of his people. That's one of the ways that worship generates power. In Psalm 22, 3, But you are holy, you who inhabit the praises of Israel. Did you know God does not want anything to dwell in but us, his people. He wants a relationship with us. That's why we were created. That relationship deepens through praise. One of the ways we have direct access to God is through our praise because God dwells in, he lives in, he abides in our praise and worship. He comes near to us as we create an atmosphere of worship. In his presence is everything that we need. Praise and worship is not necessarily singing. You know, we were created with a spirit and as our spirit is connected to God's spirit, we just have the desire to worship him. And it can be just in words or thanksgiving or our actions, our attitudes. And you know, praise and worship, they're not the opening act for the pastor's message. And worship does not just happen in church, which is a good thing because during COVID, we would have a lot of worshipless Christians. Musicians and a worship leader on stage may be one form of worship leading us into worship. But did you know that praise is a part of who we are as human beings? And we're created 
in the image of God. And can you imagine God just looking over all creation and just being so exuberant and so thrilled with what he made? And he created us in that same way. So think about different ways that we praise in our life. Uh, we watch a game in a huge arena or on a big screen TV with a bunch of people and the crowd just roars when our team just scores a, a point or a goal, right? How about if you're around a table and your family is playing a game like maybe sorry and then whoever wins, the family just, you know, cheers, yay, or maybe some people get mad if they lose, but you know what I mean. How about a standing ovation and applause after the symphonic orchestra just performs its finale? I know for myself, um, parents and grandparents, we clap loudly at our child's first performance in kindergarten as a tree. We're born to praise. It's deep within us, in our spirit, man. We are created to worship and we worship what and who we love. I don't think there could ever be a passive worshiper. I think we have to have a, a direct thought about it, an action. Our praise can be active and loud and boisterous, or it can be humble, quiet, and with adoration. A lot of it depends really on even our personalities or the way that we were raised or our culture. There's not a right way or a wrong way to worship. I think um, Christians, we've kind of gotten into a habit. You know, if we go to church, we do a few fast songs, we do a few slow songs. Um, I don't think that's necessarily uh, right or wrong, but I don't think it's, we can't just categorize that as the only way to worship God. Our life is a worship to him. I remember um, quite a few years ago, Jim and I were pastoring in Cedarville and Lachino Christian Fellowship was the name of the church that we started there. And we were able to help send a Native American couple in our church to a indigenous people's conference. This was like a, a worldwide conference. And when they got back, they showed us uh, the video. That was before we had any live social media. And every single tribe had its own unique style of worship. It was just fascinating, just breathtaking. Every culture has its own form of worship. And we just, we can't take that away from them. We just need to in, encourage them in it, right? Worship means basically that we just express our love for God, who he is, and not just what he does. That helps us to draw close to him. And then of course he dwells in our praise. C.S. Lewis wrote in Reflections on the Psalms that praise is inner health made audible. When we've experienced who Jesus is, when we begin a relationship with him and he begins to open our eyes to the kingdom of God, the magnitude of our salvation itself just causes us just to have thanksgiving and words of praise or uh, just worship to God. It just flows out of us just like our breath. It's not just singing. It's just a, a grateful heart. So why is it so difficult for so many people to worship or give thanks to God? I know there are people that just um, skip the whole worship part and just come in for the message. Well, I think there's a few thoughts. Here's some that I have. Religious training. Did you know Jesus is not a religion, right? Religion is void of any relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. I remember being in a, I won't mention the name of the denomination, but it was so stiff and formal that I felt like I couldn't even move in my seat. I, I really thought about, should I cross my legs or not? And that certainly isn't a vibrant relationship with Jesus who loves us. There are also very legalistic rules and rituals, do's and don'ts that have been put on a lot of people. And that does not allow any sincere worship of God. It actually quenches us down. There's also a lack of understanding. A lot of people, they, you know, they look around and they think, why do people clap or raise their hands anyway? 
I don't know. I don't understand it. And how about fear of embarrassment? You know, we look around. I remember the first time I was in a church service. I hadn't been a Christian very long. And people were just, you know, really relaxed and enjoying the music. And I, I just sort of kind of put my hand up like this, kind of to see what it would sort of feel like. So that's kind of how we start. We just start to kind of join in. You know, people will yell and clap at a Packer game, but they're kind of afraid to do it in church. I mean, is this really okay? I also think pride is involved. It's like, what would I look like to others? Will I look kind of foolish? But the thing is, our inner, the inner man in us, our spirit man, we were just created to worship, and we have to work hard to push it down and not worship God. Another way that we experience power in worship is God will show us what Satan is doing, his strategies. So here's a question. If I ask you, why did Jesus come? There'd be so many different answers. But in 1 John 3, 8, it says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested or appeared, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now remember, we are God's hands and feet. We carry the power and the anointing, the presence of God everywhere we go. So God certainly wants to show us not only what he's doing, but what the enemy is doing. And the way that he does that is through the word, as we read the word or listen to it, but also when we draw close to him in worship. He reveals himself to us, and then he can also reveal Satan's strategies. God has great plans for our lives. Some scriptures that are familiar to us probably, Jeremiah 29, 11, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Romans 8, 28. In Isaiah 58, 11, Isaiah states, and the Lord will guide you continually. And there's so many others that talk about God's purposes for us. But Satan also has a plan. Any of you who have ever heard me teach, I've taught about this often, that in Ephesians 6, it talks about the wiles of the devil, or the wiles mean with a road. So Satan has a plan and God has a plan. And so as we worship God, God begins to uncover or reveal to us, sort of like disarming a bomb where there's no threat any longer. But he shows us what Satan's attacks are. And then, of course, he gives us the will and the way to please him. We know the scriptures. And then Satan also doesn't seem so big and scary because we're in God's presence and we see how sovereign, how majestic he is. Gives us peace in our lives. God empowers us to overcome Satan and the evil in our lives. Things that have influenced us and things also that come out of us to influence others. He gives us the ability to draw close to him and, and repent. He's never the condemning one. His voice is never of condemnation. In Matthew 10, 1, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And then in verse 18, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemy any means hurt you. He gives us a strategy, then he gives us the power to overcome the enemy. Worshiping God gives us life now to serve him and shows us our created purpose. We don't become Christians just so we have eternal life someday or so we can just sort of make it to the end and hang on by our fingernails and hope we can survive. We're carriers of the very spirit of God. Now, listen to this, this amazing fact. This is Romans 8, 11 in the message. It says, if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he will do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life, 
with his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. You know, the thing is, we can just come to the Lord without any agenda. We can come to him um, whether we really feel like it or not. And he always embraces us, draws close to us, and really helps us in whatever circumstance that we are experiencing right now. Because he knows, right? He knows every detail of our lives. I honestly don't know what I would do without the ability to worship God. Because I, I categorize my life. I have that personality. And so it's so difficult to put life these days and different um, you know, concerns and traumas and people into categories. But when I just come to the Lord just as I am, um, it just gives me the ability just to, just to know that everything is going to be okay even if I don't hear specific details. God has great purpose for us, and he has specific plans for us while we're here on earth. And that's part of, of worship as well. Um, in Luke 19, the parable of the minas, Jesus spoke another parable because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas, and said to them, do business until I come. We all have assignments on earth while Jesus is in heaven until his return. This is a purpose for which we are called. 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have to stop thinking of ourselves as just mere human beings, just people that sin and we have difficulties and we struggle with the trials and we can't overcome them. Not that we don't have struggles and trials, but we need to see ourselves more and more as a spiritual being, that we are a part of the kingdom of God. And he has placed us in this earth realm at this time. In worship or drawing close to God, he shows us that we can do this, the very same things that he did while he was on earth. Jesus told us that, right? He said we would do the same works and miracles that he did and even greater things. John 12, I mean John 14, 12 through 14 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, it's not that we're so spiritual or maybe, you know, we've read the Bible a bunch of times or maybe we've walked with the Lord a long time. It just says, you know, Jesus said, he who believes in me. And I think a lot of times, those who are newer Christians have greater belief than those who have walked with the Lord a long time. I think that's why children can just have such strong faith. I remember my one daughter, Amy, when she was three years old, we were in the car and my mom was with us and she was telling us how she had fallen and hurt her wrist and she was going like this. And Amy just reached up, she was in her car seat and she just reached up and she said, Jesus healed grandma's wrist. And you know what? It was healed, just like that. We just believe we're just the vessel, and we listen, and we obey. It is an amazing way to live. And the power of God then is revealed through our obedience. Acts 10, 38. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went about doing good, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That same anointing, the presence of power, the presence and power of God lives in us, lives in you. 
Another way that power is revealed through worship, it causes us to be more like Jesus. Have you ever heard that when um, couples that live together for a long, long time, they sort of take on each other's attributes and actions and sometimes even their looks? Well, we look more like the people we hang around with, right? That's what happens when we hang around with Jesus. Jesus' main focus is for people. He loves people. He died for people, for all people. And people are the only thing that are going to last forever. And he wants our focus to be on people as well. John 13, 35 says, People will know that we love God by how we love people. It, you know, it's so difficult for us to love some of the people that God has made, right? When we draw close to God, he fills our hearts with his love for people. I don't think we can just, you know, grit our teeth and say, I'm going to love somebody today. But God can pour his love into us, into our hearts by his Holy Spirit. He can also give us his passion for people where we could not just work it up on our own. As we praise and as we worship or we just are thankful, we are actually rehearsing the attributes of God. His faithfulness, loving kindness, his mercy, his forgiveness, his grace, his majesty, and his power. Praise really begins to change. Our worship changes our mind. It especially changes our focus from ourselves to who God is. Man, do we ever need that, especially today, don't you think? Worship is an act of our will. Many times we get up in the morning or throughout the day or we're tired or we don't feel well. You know, worship is like the last thing we want to do. But if you choose as a decision of your will and begin to worship God, what happens then is your spirit man begins to worship as well. And that's what really worshiping in spirit and in truth means. It's not a big theological um, definition. Acts 4.13, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. That's us. Ordinary, simple, and when we spend time with Jesus, it changes, changes us, and it also gives us boldness. Acts 4.31, after this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. You know, we have to continue to be filled with the Spirit. It's not just a one-time thing. It's kind of like we're the paper towel roll or the conduit, and the Spirit of God continues to flow through us. Acts 1.8, we're familiar with this scripture, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and then you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. The kingdom of God is revealed to us. It's everywhere that Jesus is king. There are many kingdoms of this world, the world systems. We can especially see them being elevated in the hour we live in, can't we? Kingdoms of darkness. The world system of government or politics. The world system of religion, the financial, material, entertainment, educational. These are worldly systems and they do not reflect the kingdom of God. Now it happens as God's people filled with his spirit he calls us into all those different avenues of life. And then we are bringing the kingdom of God into those areas. And we are forcefully advancing the kingdom. And we are pushing back the spirits and the darkness in those world systems. That's why we've got to spend time with God. So we know that we are filled with his power and we have his vision. And we know that it's what God has called us to do. Because anytime you're going to step out and do something for the Lord, you're going to be opposed. It's going to be tested until 
God knows that it truly is your vision and not just something that you want to do for him. Romans 8, 14, so important. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. We can't be just children of God. We've got to be sons of God. And that means we listen and we're led. John 14, if you love me, obey me. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, and he will never leave you. We need com comfort in this time, don't we? We need the comforter of the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of times he'll come around you, almost like if you take a warm comforter out of your dryer, and you put it around you, and it feels so warm. The comforter, the Holy Spirit, can do that as well. We can actually feel him with us. In worship. The Holy Spirit reminds us of what God has said in his word. As with prayer and in worship, we ask, we receive. We look and we find. We knock and the door is opened. In Revelation, when we talk about the kingdoms of this world, Revelation eleven fifteen says, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. We know that that is what will happen in the final days. But in the meantime, we take the kingdom wherever we go. And finally, worship helps us to bring glory to God. I felt just recently, it actually was last week, I was in my living room and I was worshiping God. I love that song, Gratitude, by Brandon Lake. It's just one of my favorites right now. And the Lord just spoke to me, just, you know, how he does just gently, kind of in your mind, you just begin to sort of have understanding about things. And he said, I need to embrace the bad and the difficult things in my life, not just all the good things. Some of the bad things like Jim's death, which it, it doesn't seem to get much easier a little bit year by year. Um, sickness, I've been sick a lot this year, loneliness. And then my upcoming surgery, I'm going to have my hip replaced. And so he said, you know, embrace all of these things just like you embrace the good things. Because what it is, it's like he's walking with me through them all. And it just helps me sense his presence. Living the life of a Christ follower or a disciple, it has been misrepresented, misrepresented to many of us. We have thought or even been taught that becoming a child of God exempts us from the difficulties of life. But I'm not going to go into any theology with you right here. But I do know that Jesus told his disciples in John 16, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus prayed in the garden in John 12. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Glorifying God means we listen to him and we are in agreement with everything that he says. In worship, we hear his voice. We receive his heart. He gives us the ability and the desire to obey him. Our lives then reflect who he is. You know, you've heard this over and over, but it's so true. You are born for this time in history. You are in the kingdom for great things. You may not think they are very great, but everywhere you go, you take his presence, his power, and you take the kingdom of God. I think that our prayer needs to be like Jesus' prayer in the garden. Not, Father, save me from this hour, but, Father, glorify your name. Worship is our lifestyle. It's the way we serve God, and it offers us his power. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you so much for your word, Lord. But more than anything, God, we thank you for your presence that's with us. We thank you for the way that you reveal yourself through your word, Lord. 
but your tangible presence is what we long for and what we so need. I ask, Lord, that you would come to not just the people who are watching tonight, Lord, but for all of your children, the children of God throughout not only this region, Lord, or through our state or our nation, Lord, but through the world. We need you, Lord, in this time. We need to hear your voice. We need to know that we are loved, that we are accepted, that we are forgiven. We need to know, Lord, that you walk through us in all difficulties, and some of them you even deliver us and set us free from. Lord, help our lives to be a worship to you. Help us not just use you know, Christianese or phrases like we worship or we praise, but Lord, just let everything that comes out of our lives reflect who you are. God, we know that as we give ourselves to you, even if the words that come out of us, then you fill us up. You fill that void, Lord, as we give. And Lord, we know we can never outgive you. Empower us, Lord. I just release your spirit, Lord, to flow into the people. Touch the people who are watching this right now, God, by your spirit. I ask, Lord, for your angels to be loosed into their situations, into their trials and difficulties, even into their times of rejoicing, Lord. Give them the extra help that they need. But I pray, Lord, that your presence would be so strong that it would be just increased from anything they have ever experienced. Thank you, Lord, that you watch over this word to perform it. Thank you, Lord, that you have called and put us in this kingdom of God, in this place at this time, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching with me. Love you guys. One more message next week. We'll end the series. I hope you will be with me as well. Good night.